Hello everyone, this is Ben over at ERP Connect, and in this video we are going to be walking you through our advanced purchasing extension within D365 Business Central. As always, the first thing you'll need to do is go out to AppSource to download your free 30-day trial, after which you will need to come into the advanced purchasing setup that you see here on the screen and click Generate Demo Key. That will give you free, unlimited 30-day access to our extension, after which you can reach out to anybody on our team to purchase your activation key, which you can enter right here. So before we get started, I do want to go over the key takeaways and functions that will be provided in today's session. So those include the ability to gain more visibility into item vendor data on various records like sales orders and quotes, purchase orders and quotes, as well as, of course, items. Then we also have the ability to auto calculate lead times for vendor items, as well as auto calculate reorder points for vendor items. We have the ability to generate purchase quotes from sales orders, sales quotes, and jobs that will essentially allow you to shop vendors, prices, and delivery dates on those certain items that are included on the orders, quotes, and jobs. You also have the ability to automate the import of new prices and delivery dates from those vendor quotes that they send back the selection of purchase quotes that are actually going to be used from vendors based on best price delivery date or combination of the two uh, is also another function of this tool and then finally on that purchase quote piece we have the automatic ability to send uh, reminders to your vendors that they're late on stuff or that you've got open purchase orders you can do that either from a dashboard to kind of monitor or automated from a job queue the last thing that we're going to review is the ability to create recurring orders and invoices similar to what we have for sales on the invoice and statement delivery side but in advanced purchasing we kind of do the same thing for our purchase orders and our purchase invoices so without further ado let's jump right into the advanced purchasing setup to get started so the very first thing we're going to focus on today in the advanced purchasing setup is this generate item vendor button. Essentially what this is going to do is it's automatically going to create records in the item vendor table for you. And this is just a one-time thing upon install. So again, most of you just installed this. And if you're using this for the first time, go ahead and click that generate item vendor button. This is going to take all of your historical transactions and build out that item vendor table for you for the very first time. Now that every vendor item combination has been created in the future, all of these will be automatically auto created so you don't have to come back and do this multiple times. Right now in Business Central, you buy an item, you have multiple vendors you're buying that item from, the system does not automatically create those records for you, which is the solution that we're providing here today. Now that all of those are being created, how do we see those, right? That's going to be these next five checkboxes. So we've got the show item vendor fact box. We've got on sales order, sales quote, purchase order, purchase quote, and of course our items. So what this is going to do is it's going to, as again, these items are created and they're being quoted and things like that, surface it directly in these documents, giving you more visibility without having to click into other screens. So it's going to show when you've bought it in the past, the, um, the price, the margins, uh, last time they quoted uh, and a handful of other information that we'll show in our demo today. So again, if you're buying uh, items from multiple vendors, this app can be a huge time saver. And again, when working with sales orders, for an example, and talking to your customer, you can immediately in the sales order, see the various different scenarios. So maybe they need it right now. And we've got a vendor who can get it for them right now, but maybe it's a little bit higher price. Maybe you don't need it right now. I can get it at a lower price, but it's going to get uh, take a little bit longer to get from another vendor. So this adds huge value by being able to see that directly in the various quotes and orders and as well again on the actual item itself. So with this information at your fingertips, hopefully your salespeople and order processors uh, are able to be a little bit more efficient in their day-to-day -day process. So with that, that's it on that piece of setup, but there is one more toggle up here on the general that we have, and that is for checking the vendor invoice number on purchase orders uh, and purchase invoices. So what this is going to do, uh, you don't have to wait anymore to actually like post it or preview post to find out that this invoice number has already been used. It's going to tell you uh, before getting to that stage that the vendor uh, already has a invoice with this number. Again, a huge time saver because currently you have to wait, of course, until you post. Then you get the error uh, and then it just takes more time to have to go back, update it, and then post it again. So that's the last thing that you need up here on the general tab. And the next piece before we jump into our item vendor lead times is going to be this generate item locations. So 
out of box again, you have to do all of this manually. Uh, you will want to come up and click this button upon first install. What this is going to do is it's automatically going to create the item location stock keeping units for you. Again, just a one time thing after which all new combinations that are used in the future will automatically be updated in this table as well. So with that, the next two options that we'll get down into here, focus on our item vendor lead times. So if you want to automatically have vendor lead times updated as transactions are processed, you will definitely want to turn this on. From an out-of-box standpoint, the big issue with items and item vendor records is that they have to be manually maintained, especially the lead times. But with our advanced purchasing tool, that's a thing of the past. This is an automated calculation based on the number of receipts that you can define over here on the right. And then every time you receive a new item, it's going to compare the purchase order date to the receipt date. It's going to calculate the length of time it took over the last number of receipts that you've defined and kind of average them out in order to update the item vendor combination. Uh, and if that vendor is the primary vendor, it will also update the item card with these new lead times. So a very simple setup uh, for what you need to do right here, but very powerful in terms of the functionality that it's going to provide. So with that, the next thing we'll jump into is our item reorder points. Now with these item reorder points, you historically had to maintain them manually in Autobox BC and they were all static data points. We now have the ability to auto calculate that based on whenever an item is sold. So once inventory drops below a certain level, we of course want to order more. If an item's selling faster, you want that reorder point to go up because you want to have more inventory on hand. And of course, on the flip side, if an item selling slower, you want that reorder point to go down because now you're not selling as much and you may be overstocked in your warehouse and you don't want you don't want to continue to reorder at the velocity you were before. So how do we accomplish this? First, turn this button on. Next, we have our recalc window. This is going to be the number of days in the past that you want to look at and base your calculation off of. In our case, we're going to use 30 days as an example. Then finally, we have our multiplier. What this is going to do is it's going to take our average usage within the lead time and multiply it by this factor. So let's think of it in terms of an example. Say you have a 30 day lead time for an item. On average, you sell 10 units in that 30 days. Typically it takes 30 days to get it. You sell an average of 10 in those 30 days. The reorder point should not be 10 because you're cutting it too close. Every time you run out, it's going to take 30 days to get that back in inventory. And now uh, your volume is just going to be all out of whack in terms of your time frame. So this is where the multiplier comes into play. Reorder point gets multiplied by the multiplier to ensure you have enough stock to handle orders, but so that you also are not overstocked and just putting things on the shelves that you're not going to sell uh, in the near term. So this multiple, of course, can vary business to business, but we have a 1.5 multiple as our example for today and have seen that be fairly standard across clients that are implementing this tool. So the biggest benefit is the dynamic calculation, right? In BC, we've talked about this before. You'd have to do this manually, download it, look at various factors, update it, and bring it back in. If you're selling thousands of items, it's very manual and time intensive to have to maintain uh, these accurate reorder points and lead times. And this is going to help take that legwork off of the users. Just calculate everything automatically so that you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and we currently do have use cases of clients saving a whole day's worth of time simply by eliminating this task from their month end process in the warehouse. So definitely a huge benefit here on the automated item reorder points, but we do still have a few more setups to go before jumping into the demo with the next focus being on our past due follow-ups for our vendors. So these past due follow-ups work the same as the warehouse dashboard. If you have used that part of our warehouse dashboard before, it's going to send past due follow-ups to vendors if we have not received their stuff based on RPO. There is both a dashboard and a job queue that you can run these from. The test email will work similarly to how it does an invoice and statement delivery where you can populate this and it will override all of the emails in the system, send you the email uh, if you want to test how a document will look on any purchase order uh, in the dashboard or again from the job queue. So again, it's just going to be an over override uh, and it will send to whoever's defined there. The only other setup here is how many days you want to wait before emails are sent again. In this case, it will send follow-ups every three days and that is um, really all there is to the setup here. The next thing we'll jump down here is the purchase quote worksheet. So the purchase quote worksheet, this is going to allow us to activate the purchase worksheet on sales orders, quotes, jobs, uh, the requisition worksheet, and then also be able to generate purchase 
quotes um, to vendors with an Excel spreadsheet attachment, allowing the vendors to enter in their pricing and delivery date information directly on the spreadsheet. And then when they send that back, we can actually import that directly into BC, which again is giving it kind of a more automated look and feel so that you don't have to put the information in manually. And that's going to round out this purchasing process. So essentially allows you to shop around for the items you need while sending quotes out to multiple vendors at the same time that you've purchased from uh, in the past all at once, get that information back and then upload it via Excel in a very automated fashion. Um, so with that, that's going to take care of all of our various setup options that you see here. And the last thing that we'll look at before jumping into our demo back up at the top here is our email templates. So these email templates are gonna be very similar to the other apps that you've seen in the past to do emailing. Here you're gonna define the email subject in body, uh, which is gonna be again, rich text HTML. So you can add various images and colors and things in there as you see fit. And then um, you can select which documents the various templates can be used for. So as we go through our demo, we'll show you how these various email templates can be used. Uh, and of course we have a bunch of different wild cards as well. So let me jump into the past due one. For example, you can see all of our wild cards like the vendor name and the document number and amounts and things like that. And then you can add in your personalized message here, um, just saying, hey, we haven't received this yet. You know, We're gonna close it out if we don't receive a response in 24 hours, let's say. So that's all fully customizable. And then again, you'll be able to pick which documents those various email templates um, are used for. So with that, we are all good to jump into our demo. So I'm going to first jump into a sales quote to show you how we can start utilizing this tool. All right, so let's go create that sales quote. And again, we can do this for quotes, orders, or jobs. And I'm just going to use one of my customers here, just kind of build out your standard quote. Got some pop-up notes there from advanced notifications. If you haven't checked that out, I would highly recommend it. Uh, let's just do this requested delivery date for Friday. And then I'm going to do three items here. I'm going to do two stock and one special order. I'll show you why that's important here in a second. So let's do 1017, the Surface, the MacBook, and we should have a keyboard in here somewhere. Perfect. And I'm just going to do a quantity of one for each. And you'll also notice that my item vendors are starting to uh, show up over there on the right. So if I go to line one, we've got about 10 vendors um, that we've bought this from in the past. This line we've only bought from two people. And this one I think we've bought uh, from four people. So when we start to generate these quotes in the purchase quote worksheet, it's actually going to send quotes out to all these vendors to get um, their best price and kind of when their delivery dates are so that we can start to build this out and make sure that it gets to our customer in time and also that we're making a good margin on it, right? So if I come back here, you'll also notice that this one that's color coded in green means that it's our primary for that item. Again, if I come over here, you can see the last cost date, margin, uh, last quote cost, last quote quantity, and the last date it was quoted. So a lot of good information there. And um, after we take a look at this, we can actually go ahead and come up to process and actually pro uh, process our purchase quote worksheet here under advanced purchasing that you'll see that little uh, APR code there to indicate that we're using our app. So let's go ahead and generate that. And the first thing you'll notice here is this purchaser code option. So a very important option here is just who is going to uh, appear as it's sending from. So if I look at this, we have the vendor card. It's just going to take it from the vendor. Who is the default purchaser at that vendor? That's who it's going to appear as if the email is coming from. We have the salesperson uh, uh, code. This is going to be from the sales quote or order that we just generated this off of or job um, where the salesperson is also acting as the purchaser. And again, that's just going to be for emailing purposes. So the vendor will see that the, the salesperson essentially is the one sending it to them, or you can use the user ID. So this is just going to be the person running this transaction. In this case, it's me. Uh, it could be a purchasing assistant or somebody else that's helping with the process. They would be, again, the ones that get the emails back from the vendor because, again, think you're sending these out via email maybe 10 or 20 at a time when they respond, that's the person that's going to go to. So that's why that's very crucial and important there. I talked about special order, uh, special order items here. So this is where this comes into play. If I click special order, it's going to filter it down just to that keyboard. Cause that is the only one that's special ordered as we can see down here. Or if I go to all items, maybe I just haven't gotten a quote for some of these stock items in a while and I just want to price shop, right? So maybe I can get a better deal. Uh, maybe because of that better deal, we might um, fill up our stock a little bit more, right? So two different options there. It's just going to filter the worksheet lines there. And if you wanted to see all of those vendors back in more detail, you could simply click here 
come out to that item specifically, come to related purchases and vendor. And that's going to give you that full blown list that we saw before that we saw in the fact box, right? So green means that this is our primary. We can see some of the lead time calculations, some of the purchase costs and, and things like that. So if you want that more granular view, you can come in here um, and you do have to set the primary vendor. There's not a, a calculation per for preferred vendor. That's just still something that you'd have to set um, manually. So let's come back out here to that worksheet. And at this point, you can do one of two things. Um, you can just go ahead and, and generate it based on what we've purchased in the past, or we can go ahead and actually generate those purchase quotes that we want to shop around for. So I'm going to click generate purchase quote. And at this point, I'm going to click yes. And now all the purchase quotes have been created, right? So again, you could just set these and, and move on and not send them out to anyone via email. It would just create them and pick the uh, best price in this case is the default, but then you can also toggle to soonest delivery, uh, best price by date, which looks at the uh, delivery date that was requested and gets the best prices that can be fulfilled by those dates. Um, so just three different options that we have here in order to finish out your process. I would recommend shopping these around. So that would be this email purchase quote step. So at this point, it's going to help us automate all of these emails. So if I come up to email purchase quotes and click yes, what this is going to do is it's creating all of these emails. So you see, I have 10 quotes for this, uh, this surface. I've got two people I've bought from, uh, the MacBook before, and I've got four people I've brought this keyboard from before there's some uh, intermixed vendors in there. <clears throat> so I should have 10 quotes total that are all going out to my vendor. So let me pull my email up. I should have one for Rick. So let's pull that over. And this email is very important because again, I'm, I'm sending it to myself for testing, but uh, imagine if you had to do all this by hand, right? We just sent out 10 different emails that I got in my inbox. They all have the purchase quote attachment and then also a purchase quote worksheet, as well as a bunch of wildcard information that we had set up in our uh, advanced purchasing setup. So the purchase quote is going to be pretty standard. This is just going to say, Hey, these are the three items that I want to get quoted. This is what we paid last time from you. Um, and then the actual worksheet itself, let's not save that. Let's open up this Excel document. This Excel document is key, right? Because this is what the vendor is getting. They now have the opportunity to fill this out for us. And then we have the opportunity when they send it back to just drag and drop it, upload it into BC and have those quotes automatically update. Um, so that it is going to make it super easy in order to uh, update those prices and continue to work in a very automated fashion. So let's say the vendor looks at this and says, okay, I can do that for 600. I can do that for 950. They're going to save this and send it back to us. And then in the actual purchase quote itself, if I come out here, let's go into Rick's. So let's take a look at this quote. Uh, this should be, let's see, this is Rick. Let's show the document there on the quote. Now, what was just sent out to us is saved in this document right here, this one. So you can see the purchase quote worksheet. That's an Excel document and it's included in advanced purchasing. So that's what we just got. You can drag and drop this and it will update the prices and it will also update that worksheet. So now the most recent worksheet that we have pricing for uh, is what's going to be in here. And then that will come back into this quote for him and go ahead and update it. So let's just do it manually because I didn't save that file. So we've got 600 and 950. And then if I come back into the purchase quote worksheet, I can go ahead and either refresh it. That should do the trick. So you can see now the best price, 600, 950. In this case, now Rick wins on, on all counts, right? So he's got the best price for all of these items. Um, and he probably has the best delivery date as well. If I do this, it's not going to update anything. Um, as soon as delivery, he's probably got the best delivery as well. So you can see the selection options down here are changing, but, um, He's got the best prices for all. So uh, if I had a different vendor, like we saw earlier that had a better price, it would select them here. And then it would make two purchase orders uh, based on this selection. So once we're ready to go here, we can set the selection and you'll notice down here, selected PQ number uh, is blank right now. If I go to set selection and click yes, uh, that is going to pop that open and select those uh, purchase quotes. So if I hit set selection, that is going to pick those purchase quotes. So we can see one zero four six on all counts here. And again, that's just going to be based on the best price selection that we had uh, down below there. So again, it's important to understand when the customer wants this. So we know which option to choose, right? If they don't care about getting it tomorrow, uh, we may want to shop around uh, and get a better price. Um, that way, you know, they can wait a few days, but if they need it tomorrow, uh, we're going to set to, to soonest delivery so that we can get that ASAP might not necessarily be the best price though. So with all this, once we're good to go, 
those have been selected. We can see um, which lines have been selected and all that good stuff. Now we're ready to generate the sales order and the purchase order. So I'm going to click yes. And if we come back out here into our sales orders, come down here, we can see 1202 for customer 100. We now have our three items. So we have that Surface 8, the MacBook Air, the keyboard. The keyboard's on special order, or it's a special order item. Uh, we've got all of our prices. And then if I come down to one of these, for example, come to order special order, those are all linked just as before. So it, it's a way to link all this stuff together that the out-of-box business central functionality does not give you. Uh, and there you can see the various lines. Now, I know this one's a special order, but if I come back into one of these that's not marked as a special order based on the linkage uh, and the functionality that we need here, we have linked these so that you can easily see them. Uh, again, we see that Rick had won all three bids on all three of those items. So uh, that's going to pull up his purchase order there as well on the special order. So because of this link in, uh, linking nature, even with those stock items that we're seeing on the first two lines, uh, you can see full visibility through all this, which, which adds um, a lot of different uh, features and functionality outside of uh, the standard out-of-box business central for uh, doing these purchase quotes off of those, those sales orders. So a really efficient way to get emails out to your vendors, get some quotes back, and then quickly process those sales orders. So with that, that's the end of this piece of the demo. And the next piece we'll jump into is actually analyzing those purchase quotes. So let's go and see a few things that we didn't use. So I'm going to come into the purchase quote here. And if we come down, uh, you can see the one that was used was archived here. Um, we can just go up here and archive the rest of them. Um, and what the archiving is going to do uh, is it's going to set a disposition status for us that's saying that it was not selected. And then we can go back and historically analyze this so we can see the percentage of wins for vendors, right? It's going to give us statistics on which vendors are selected uh, the most, uh, which have the best prices, the soonest delivery dates, things like that. Um, and uh, they're, they're also archived so that you're not going to be utilizing these in the future as well um, because they have now been either won or lost based on that uh, sales order and purchase quote purchase order link. Um, again, you know, if there were multiple here, would ar have archived multiple of these. But that's really it in terms of linking those POs and SOs and then using these uh, purchase quotes to do some analytics based on who typically wins. So the last thing I'm going to show here is our past due follow ups. So if we come back out here, if I go to APR, it's going to pull up all of our options. We have this PO past due dashboard. Come in here, we can see all of the past due purchase orders that we have out there. Uh, we can quickly do an email follow up with this button right here. Um, and again, we can show some statistics here on who is typically late. This is going to be the same function that we have in the warehouse dashboard. So I'll just link the warehouse dashboard video. I uh, would highly recommend uh, anybody who sees benefit in this also checking out our warehouse dashboard. Very similar functions there. You can either run it from this dashboard or you can set it on a job queue. Uh, most people are just putting it on that job queue so that the reminders are going out automatically nightly or uh, whenever you have that defined. We've got a lot of different email functions and a lot of different apps, but at the end of the day, they're all going to work very similarly. And we do recommend putting a lot of those on job queues in order to help you automate a lot of that functionality. So with that, I've got one more thing, and that is our additional purchase order button that we have there. So if I come here to our purchase order and I come into any old purchase order that we've got down here. We've got one for Rick again. Great. Inside of this purchase order, we've got a process button and you can send these by email. So you'll see that APR again, indicating that that's our extension. Um, you can use the templates here. So if I come send by email, we can see the various templates here. Uh, we've got the purchase order. You'll notice it's filtered down. This was all based on our um, setup. And then this just makes it super easy to email. So you can click OK. You can, again, it's got all of the, the messaging and the to from, um, and then you should be good to go. So none of this functionality uh, is, is easily used in out-of-box Business Central, which is why we added some of these additional features. And we thought adding this button, especially to the purchase order, to email it very quickly, even if you're not using the rest of the POSO link, uh, adds a lot of value. So I would highly recommend checking that out. Uh, we do have one more thing for our... Um, recurring purchase orders and invoices, which I'll jump over to here uh, in a second. But in terms of all of the 
linking functionalities and emails and all that good stuff. Um, that is it for now. So with that, let's round it out and go into our recurring purchase orders and invoices to finalize this thing. So the first place I'll go is the APR setup. And there are just a few fields that you'll have to populate. So very similar to our invoice and statement delivery on the sales side with recurring sales orders and invoices, this is going to work almost exactly the same way. So the first thing you'll need to do is put in this recurring document number series. So again, that's just going to number them one, two, three, four, as we see them in our setup. Next is going to be this posting option. We have two options here, receive or receive an invoice. This is going to come into play when we do our generation of the documents. So if you're automatically going to be posting these, do you want that posting to do a receipt or a receipt plus the invoice? This posting date offset is important if you're going to be uh, generating things and having a different posting date from the generation date. So let's say you have uh, documents you're generating on the 25th of the month, but they're actually invoices for next month on the 1st. You can do a posting date offset there so that your generation and your posting are different. And then finally, this dashboard queue, which we'll get into in a second here. By default, what the dashboard is going to show, similar to kind of recurring general journals, right? So we're taking some of the functions there and putting them into the purchasing side. What it's going to do, it's, it's only going to allow you to post things that are uh, today or in the past from a recurring date um, standpoint. This is going to allow us to go five days into the future in the dashboard dashboard, see those documents, and then also generate those documents. So again, if you want to see anything past today that's due for creation or generation in that dashboard queue, we'll see five days into the future um, in this case. And with that, as we go through the posting, we'll also talk about how we can do this from a dashboard as well as from a job queue. So with that, let's jump into our example. First thing you'll need to do is come into the recurring documents down here, the recurring purchase documents. You'll also see the recurring sales documents right here. So again, same exact functionality, just we're on the purchasing side today. If you're interested in the sales side, check out invoice and statement delivery. So let's come down to recurring purchase documents. This is kind of going to be, think of these as the templates, right? So here's where you create the templates that are going to be generated every month and where you're going to do the setup. So you'll see three documents here. Again, that number series, one, two, three, four. We have the ability to do both purchase orders as well as purchase invoices. So in this case, I'm going to focus on the first two for today, um, and we'll generate those end to end. If you notice here on the vendor invoice number, we have some wild cards. So this is going to do uh, invoice November 2023 because we're in November or November 2023 rent in this case. Let me jump into one of these, show you some more options. Like I said, we've got those wild cards here for the invoice number, the three and the four. The recurring frequency, again, that's going to be the same as ISD on the sales side. So 1M minus CM. These are just out-of-box business central date formulas. Uh, this is going to put our document on the first of every date to be generated. If you need a custom date uh, kind of selection, you can put in very, very specific dates here, both for the schedule and the schedule posted date. So you can fill this matrix out kind of manually. Otherwise, if you do this, this is just going to follow a formula. The posting option, so when these are generated, what do you want to do? Do you want to create the document and leave it open? Do you want to create and release it? Or do you want to create and post it? Now, all of these different functions, just based on kind of what you're trying to do, if you do that create and post, that's where those posting options in the setup come in play. So do you want to just receive it or do you want to receive and invoice it? So again, based on your requirements, feel free to do that. We're going to do a create and release and a create and leave open for today's example. The next occurrence and next occurrence posting date here, as you continue to post these, this will update automatically based on your recurring frequency. So the next one we have here is for 11.1. And then this is going to continue to recur until our expiration date of 12.31.2024. So again, it's going to generate every single month. Once we hit 2025, uh, this is no longer going to be active. On hold here, if you need to manually put it on hold for a given period of time, you can toggle this on. And then if you know that maybe um, this is going to be on hold until 1-1-2024, let's say, you could put an automatic on hold until date until 1-1-2024 is an example. Once that date hits, it will take this off of hold and then continue to uh, generate that recurring document. So again, the last thing here is we've also have those wild cards in the lines. And if I jump over to my purchase invoice, we'll just show you how this is exactly the same. So wildcards there, wildcards here down below. We have those date formulas, the posting options, which we're going to create this one and leave it open. We've got the next occurrence dates and the on holds and all of that good stuff. So with that, the final piece is to generate these on a monthly or weekly basis. You can see down here, this one is going to be generated every week. And if I come back out here into my recurring dashboard, this is where you're going to generate them from. Again, you'll have a recurring dashboard for advanced purchasing as well as invoice and statement delivery if you're using both tools. We're going to focus on advanced purchasing. <clears throat> 
and here you see all the documents. So biggest thing to point out here is I can do them manually every month. I can come in here, I can select multiple, and I can generate the purchase documents. You can also do this on a job queue. So if you want to have this automatically happen behind the scenes, we have a job queue that comes with advanced purchasing. Just turn it on, define your date formulas and all the out-of-box job queue type functions, and these will automatically uh, be created, posted, whatever you have set up, released. Um, so again, this one's going to be created and released, and this one is going to be created and uh, left open. So let's take these. Let's generate the purchase documents. It's as simple as that. Click yes. And now you see that the two documents have been generated. I did not select this one yet because it's not 11.7, even though I do want to see it on my dashboard. Uh, I'm going to wait until the 7th to actually generate that one. And now if I come into just my out-of-box purchase order window, we can come down here to the very bottom. And 106.110 is the one in question. We can see here that it populated my date as the first. Um, even though today is the fourth. So again, it's going to respect whatever you had on that document. Uh, the vendor invoice number automatically and dynamically updated to November 2023 based on my wildcards. The status is released. So not only was it created, but it was also released. And then down here in the item uh, line, we've got that service eight for November 2023 again as my recurring purchase order. And now you can just process as normal, right? So you can post, you can uh, receive invoice, whatever you need. So at that point, this is where our functionality would kind of end. And now you would just continue to use your out of box business central functions. On the other side of things, we have our purchase invoice. And very similarly to the purchase order, come down to this last one here that was just generated 107130. And you can see the dates again, 11111, uh, November 2023 rent. Those are coming in from my wild cards. I created and left this one open. So no, uh, no status change there. We're just going to work with this one and post it manually. Again, the third option I didn't show was create and post. So if it created and posted, these documents wouldn't even be here. They'd be in your posted table because it's just going to basically run it right through the stage and automatically post it for you. And then here, finally, you can see the uh, office rent expense for November 2023 coming in from those wild cards again. So with that, that is it on our uh, functionality here for the recurring purchase orders and invoices. Just to recap what we went through today, uh, there was a lot of functions, so I just want to quickly recap those. The first was gaining more visibility into our item vendor data on various records like our sales orders and quote, our purchase order and quote, and our items. The ability to auto-calculate uh, both lead times as well as reorder points for vendor items. The big piece of the demo today was on generating purchase quotes from sales orders, uh, sales quotes, and jobs to shop around different vendors for the items that are on those documents. With that, we are also able to automate the import of new prices and delivery dates based on what our vendors send us back from those quotes. We're then able to select the purchase quotes we want from those vendors based on best price, delivery date, or a combination of the two. And we're also able to automatically remind vendors when their stuff is late, uh, both from a dashboard or a job queue in order to automate that function. Then the last piece we went through just now was our recurring orders and invoices. Again, very similar to the sales side on invoice and statement delivery. If you haven't checked that out, I'd highly recommend it. And then taking that same functionality over to our purchase orders and our purchase invoices. So that just about wraps us up for this video. Thank you as always for checking out another one of our BC Toolbox videos focused on productivity and automation. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop us a comment below. And if you liked what you saw today, I'd highly encourage you to give this video both a thumbs up and also subscribe. Thank you again, and we will talk to everybody soon.